a month out, I would say we were still working really hard. But, um, you know, I've had a lot of messages recently from parents that are really worried and feeling really anxious now. They've been PMing me. And I'll be totally honest, I was really anxious a month before and I wanted, I felt like throwing in the towel. And Josie made me cry a couple of times and that's not an easy thing to do. So parents, if you're feeling like that, we've all felt like that. And can I, sorry, can I ask why she she made you cry? As in... Well, what? just tantrums, just okay. not wanting to do it. Um, I think she just, she'd reached a point for her, and I think it's different with every child, where she'd had enough. So I feel that, I really feel for parents that have got this delay, and maybe some feel it's great that they've got the delay, and then others feel they're just dragging things out. Um, but with us, you know, she was ready to sit that test and it was almost a little bit like it was an unknown for me first time. But what we did much more in the month leading up to it, Gemma, was full practice papers. Yep. And we hadn't done tons of that prior. So I had chunked them down into chunks. Mm -hmm. So and doing time sections of them, whereas the month before and certainly the week before we did papers but we didn't do three we only did one a day but we might do one full one yep and uh, but that was certainly only in the month and then the week before um for stamina and, i suppose to yes, it, make and, sure and, you get used to it and yeah it was just just to give her that feel of the real thing obviously she'd yeah. done the mock test but yeah i just felt it was the right thing to do but the thing that we always did and we still do it now for french vocabulary and we've done it all the way through to our GC, GCSEs, was every, I think I've said this before, every morning at breakfast, we would do a 10-minute nonverbal reasoning test because they seem to be able to switch their heads into nonverbal reasoning without warming up. Yep. And they did it every morning, and that 10 minutes really accumulates. And because we'd done that so regularly, it kind of took it off the table. Yeah. They were there with that and they were really confident. So we could focus more on the verbal reasoning, which is the biggie for CEM um, and, and the maths. So, so yeah, so really it was nice. I felt that we could take that out of the stress equation. Yep. And I think anybody who's still a year out, if you can do that just with a 10 minute CGP or bond test every morning at breakfast, you can just tick that off. Now we learn like five vo French vocabulary words. Yeah, you know that's yeah. that's what we do. And so, Josie really noticed the difference for that. So I suppose I wanted to pick up on two things because I noticed that around this time, my clients often say, often they're often at the point of I want to give up, but yeah. also if their children are like Josie, uh, rebelling against it, they often say, I'm not sure it's right. I'm not sure we should be doing it that they don't want to do it. So how did you know that she was ready rather than she just didn't want to do it? Okay. So that is a really good point, Gemma, and well done for bringing that up because that's something I should have brought up. So my philosophy on this was, I think it depends on what kind of mother you are. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and tell anybody how to parent. That's up to them. And they've got to judge their child. But the way I measured it was, would I let my child choose which car I was going to buy? Would I let my child choose which house I was going to buy? Would I let my child tell me which job I was going to do or which job I was going to take? Because at that age, I felt she was not mature enough to tell me whether she could pass or not. I knew from her that it was meltdown because she just wanted to take the path of least resistance. And she still does that now. I mean, if she doesn't, you know, she, she will prioritize during the day what she wants to do. And she priori prioritizes that by doing what she likes. You know, she'll, she'll do the things she likes first. So I think that, I, and there was a, definitely a time where I, I did think, is this too much? But I just kept moving through and thought, well, do you know what? Life isn't easy. It's tough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people don't become super successful by not working. Look at what junior doctors have to do. Yep. And yep. yeah, I think you do 
you do have to have a certain stamina. But if I'd have capitulated, then she would have just capitulated because mum was giving up. Yeah. And I was saying it was okay for her to give up. So I just thought. And also, I think when I say that to parents, it's, it's not just that you're giving up on the exam. It's, it's almost like you're giving up on them. Yes. And, and, that, yes. and that's even worse than. Yes. Even though they're having that moment that they're, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go to that school. I don't want to be yeah. there. If you just say, fine, let's not do it. You're saying you don't believe in them. And, and, the and that's other, you giving up on them. Yeah. And the other thing, Gemma, just, just to pick up on a point about their choice of school. Okay. So I took Josie to see the Abbey, which is in Reading. A beautiful school, fabulous school. We could never afford it. I should never have taken her there. And we took it to the local comp, Edgebarrow, which is a great school, um, much shinier than Kendrick, where she is. And we took her to Kendrick. And of course, she wanted to go to the Abbey because she liked the food in the swimming pool. Yeah. She was nine. She was a, she's, she's a July baby. And she was nine. And so I kind of had to, to say again, you know, she was saying, I want to go to the Abbey. I had to say, well, look, we can't. This is the best school for you. I truly believe in that. And that's the one we're going to go for. But I do understand parents wobbling. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think also you've reached the end of, you kind of reached the end of your tether of going for oh, yeah. it. You want to give up on it. If they're then going, I'm not going to do it. I don't think I can do it. I, you know, I don't want to go to that school anyway. It can be, it can be quite pressurizing to turn around. But I think the biggest thing is that you've done all that work. Also, yes. if you've done all that work and then you were to just not do the test then it would almost be it, it it sets them up for the wrong thing as well yeah. because because it's it's shown that you can put all that prep in and then you can throw your toys out the pram and, and it's not going to happen which isn't the way that it works in uh, in real life so exactly. so even for my students who who really really rebel against it we we do still keep pushing them um i think there's a difference between i think there's a line um that, yeah. that I say to parents is you know there there's a point where your child says that they can't do it and if it's in the last month then unfortunately keep going but yeah. if it's much much earlier and it's continual and they've been saying it since day one and the tutor's been saying it then you need to listen to the tutor but if they've turned they've done a u-turn and previously they've been quite okay doing the prep and, and the prep's been going okay and now they're suddenly protesting against it that's the point where you 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 will override it and then even if even if then you get that choice back you it's a choice isn't it then it's you know you you then have that school so that that would be the way that I would always put it is uh is you're still going to keep to do it because you put all the effort in beforehand and otherwise it's giving up and yeah you don't give up and like you say it's giving them more choices so but i guess i mean i don't know if this is a good time to touch upon the point of the messages that we've had in the group Gemma, about people dealing with um their child saying what happens if i fail yeah 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 you know that's... because that's heart-wrenching for a parent it's really difficult and um i mean you go first Gemma. but i'll tell you my story what i did with josie the night before once yeah. you've gone okay so it's it's something i've come across um and one of my clients it, it really affected them actually um so i tutored a couple of years ago um a little lad who was convinced that he wasn't going to do very well. His brother did very, very well before him. And, um, and he was worried about, he said to me one, one lesson, I'm worried about letting dad down because I Aww. think I'm going to let him down because I don't think I'm going to do well in my 11 plus. Um, and one of the things that I did was to bring him and his dad together and to talk about the work and to talk about the effort that he'd put in and to make sure that we were always praising the work. We weren't praising the end because the end is not definite. You, no. That way then you're working on, okay, it's really great that you've, you've gotten this in, in a practice test or that you have overcome this issue that you've had around fractions. Um, 
and and kind of in terms of anxiety and worrying that that they are that they're going to fail there's there's several things that i do with students the first is to bring them together with parents and to have that conversation because very often parents haven't had that conversation with their children they have always said to their to their children you know when you pass 11 plus or when you go to this school and it, whilst it's great to build them up if they are having that thought of what if i'm not going to do it then having that conversation and having it openly is something that i would encourage parents to do so sit down and make it very very clear that the the end goal is taking the exam the end goal is not passing the exam because yeah. that's that's first of all an important point and and also focus on i know there's so many there's so many children out there who say to me if i don't go to this school it means i'm not going to get these gcses and i'm not going to do this and i'm not going to do this, and i'm not going to ever become this and and actually that's not true because yeah. if that was true then everyone would want to go to one school and that would be it um so so again it's about making sure that they know that the opportunities are there in other schools and that obviously this is a target school this is an interest school it's one you would like them to go to that hopefully they would like to go to um but but that there are other schools as well um and the other thing that i do with with mine is i i i talk to them about okay well what happens if one paper goes wrong because that is sometimes part of that what if i fail kind of whole thing um and I say to them, okay, well, what, what if maths goes horribly wrong? And you can kind of watch them get a bit panicked about it and then make it really obvious that you've still got another test, right? You've still got another chance. What if that goes wrong? It goes wrong. You know, it happens. It happens to everybody at some point or other. And again, for parents, I, when I bring parents in, I like to discuss about the way that they feel so with with these two with this little boy and his dad i i asked dad about a time that he'd failed to do something and suddenly it was as though the child had never realized that dad had failed and he'd never considered it and dad sat there and said yeah this is a time that i failed to do something and uh, then i picked myself up and and it was about a time that he failed to get a promotion and at work and, and what he'd done about it and I said to him, how does it make you feel? And he was mimicking a lot of the same things that, that the child was worried about. So it's very much about having that conversation with them about, about because often, often children, when they're that age, they, they think that you do no wrong. They think that, that uh, you, you've never failed at anything before, that you don't have those anxieties, you don't have anything that's ever worried your life um so just having that conversation i think is important but at the same time it is important not to say that you're anxious that they're going to fail or you're anxious yeah. and ever, never use the word fail like uh, for me i don't use it because no. it's either you don't get the place it's either that you get this place or that place that okay, that's yeah. all it is there's no failing of the 11 plus that's really that's actually the, really good advice not to use that word fail yeah i think yeah there is no there is no fail because otherwise that's a definite end and that's it yeah. whereas all the work that they have done if you say they fail that's that puts that puts all of it gone i'm writing that down Gemma, because i like that there is no fail there's no fail that's really good um it's interesting just to pick up on a point so again it goes back to there's two things i wanted to say here it's the the first time you go through this journey is a lot more stressful than the second time because obviously the second time around you know what you're doing more yeah but I think when you've had a, the first child that that passes and uh, or gets a place should I say not passes or fails gets a place and gets a place easily that can put pressure on the second sibling um because although fortunately for me Jude's pretty laid back so, but I think if you've got a child who isn't laid back and is living in the shadow of, of their sibling, that's also another little hurdle. And do yours go to the same school? Or no, they... they go to different schools just because one's a girl's, one's the single sex schools. That was one yeah. of the reasons why I wanted my daughter to go to Kendrick, really. But 
so so it's easier in i think it's easier on the parent but maybe slightly more difficult on the sibling but just to pick up the the um there is no fail part with with josie um all the way through i debated whether or i debated when i should say to her it really doesn't matter whether you i think and i i think i probably use the pass and fail Gemma. so yeah and i think you're right it's wrong but i'll be honest i think i said to her i worried about because at the end of the day i wanted it to pass but if she didn't she didn't and and we would move on but i didn't want to give her too much of an inkling that it was okay not not to get in because that would have might have let her off the hook in terms yeah. of taking her foot off the gas now this is just my child so what I did with her was, and I, and I did discuss this with, with Tim, my husband as well. I made a conscious decision to leave that until the night before. And I didn't know if that was a mistake, but I didn't think it was because we'd done all the work yeah. and she wouldn't throw that away. So the night before, and she'd been promised, uh, uh, you know, something um, for, for, and I will say as well, I probably said for, for passing. So yeah. I'm sorry. And, you know, it was a big thing. It was a dog. And then, but the night before I sat with her in bed and I said, look, Jose, I said, first of all, you're getting a dog no matter what happens. And it's not about passing and failing. It's because of the work you've done. Yeah. That's what I said to her. So that was a massive like, oh, really? Wow. Da, da, da. I said, absolutely. You're, you're getting that anyway. But I, and I, then I said to her, and it does not matter now. We've done whatever... We've done everything we can do. And I truly believe that, actually. Yeah. I got to a point, Gemma, where I couldn't do any more. So, so I didn't have the guilt of failing her, if that makes sense. I knew I couldn't have done any more. And, and I said to her, look, tomorrow, go in there, just do your absolute best. And I'll talk in, in a little while about the tips and tricks and things that I told her about. Yep. Do your absolute best. And that's it. It doesn't matter. So, and then I went on to say, look, remember your exam technique, blah, 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 which I'll cover in a bit when, when the time is right. So she was prepped. I said, you can't be more prepared. Um, go for it. Yeah. And don't worry about it. No matter what happens, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think that talk the night before was the right thing to do for my girl. Whether, whether parents want to do that much earlier is up to them because it's their child. Yeah. But I felt that, I almost saw her relax when we had that talk. And then especially when I said she could go shopping with her friend afterwards. She definitely relaxed. <laughs> yeah. I think, so for mine, I would do it anywhere from a month to yeah. the day before. I would never do it before. Um, but I know some students are really anxious about, and it, it is often letting their parents down. Yeah. And it's about that conversation about, you can't let me down because you put all that effort in yeah and that's and i think that that is the key often often they've they've got a sibling who's who's already gone or, or a cousin or someone they know very very close and that's why they're worried about letting that parent down or, or failing um and that that's why that conversation has to be had as well i don't think it's something that you can breeze past um because otherwise they've always got that that anxiety and I, that i've seen it i've seen it go the complete opposite way i used to invigilate um the 11 pluses and yeah. when we um when we had a, stu uh, a student who um and it was the reason that i say once you've done the maths there's another exam is because we had a student who lost track of the maths didn't do it fell apart completely oh. couldn't go back in and that was it and that was there was the first exam was the maths and then it was an english and then there was a verbal reasoning and they were convinced that's it i failed you know my parents are going to be so angry with me all sorts of things and we could not get them back in the room oh. couldn't do it and and that's something that you know that had they had they been told by their parents you know it's not it's not something that you know we're not we're not banking on you to to pass that we, we don't we're happy with the effort that's gone in then she may well have gone back in but she didn't she didn't the other, at all. 
the other thing that I remember saying to Josie as well the night before, and then I repeated all this with Jude when it was Jude's time, but I said to Josie, look, whatever you've done, I'm absolutely sure. I mean, because obviously after doing the 11 plus sats, um, <laughs> I don't want to belittle any test, but sats seem fairly simple. Yeah. And I said to Josie, no matter what, if you, if you, if you, I probably use that word fail, Gemma, I'm so embarrassed now. If you didn't pass, um, you're going to, you're going to do great at Edge Barrow because you'll probably be on in all the top sets and you'll find it, you know, you'll be comfortable. So yeah. it, no matter what we've done, it's only going to help. And I do remember really stressing that as well, so that none of it was wasted. That's what we did with this, this little yeah. boy who in the end didn't pass his, his 11 plus then took a um, uh, 11 plus for independent schools. Fine. Absolutely fine about it. Either because the pressure wasn't there, because it wasn't the same school that his brother went to, um, yeah. or just because he needed that extra couple of months. Because yeah. that's all it is. The, the 11 plus for, for the grammars was in September. The one for the independence was in January. Ace, the January ones, didn't do yeah. so well in the September ones. And sometimes it's just that. And, yeah. uh, and, and a lot of that was around that worry that he was going to fail his parents, that he was going to let them down. But actually, because we tackled it earlier, when those results came back, he was fine to move on and he could carry on and he could deal with going through the independent exams. If you are a parent who is looking at those second wave of exams, mm. then you need to keep them up. And, uh, and being able to go through it is actually, that, that's, that's quite hard because well, you might find out either way. <laughs> well, do you know, that's interesting, Gemma, because, and I think I might have told you this before in another chat, that jo the tutor who was tutoring Josie um, actually said she felt Josie should go and sit some scholarships for some mm -hmm. indie schools. Mm -hmm. And Josie just said, no way. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Literally. I, I said to her, look, I mean, she even, you know, she was, she was talking about some quite credible schools, to be honest, yeah. which we probably could never have afforded. Yeah. Um, and Josie just said, no, I've had enough. I'm done. She did not want to do it. And I, and, and I did give her that offer. And I gave her that offer because I didn't care whether, which, what, what, what she said. Yeah. You know, it's like you give, a you give a child a choice when yes or no has the same equal weighting, I believe, you know. So, but again, that's a parenting thing. But um, do you want me to go over what I did the week before, Gemma? Yeah, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, is that is now a good time? Yep, let's. So, so yeah, every morning, um, not just the week before, we did this every day. We do our nonverbal reasoning ten minute tests, and we kind of had that box ticked. That's what we felt, and the scores she was getting when she did a mocks and those said, "Yeah, that's fine." Yep. Um, what we did do, and be, because I just found they'd be spinning on their chairs, we never did more than 30 minutes in a stretch. We'd stop, um, take a break, because, um, yeah, so they literally had ants in their pants um, and couldn't, you know, n nothing was going in after that. So we'd have a little break and then come back. Um, it was only really that week before that we started hammering the full test papers because I wanted them to peak on the day. And again, something I've said before, and this is what I said to the kids because they could understand it. I said, if you're running a marathon, you cannot run that marathon every day. That's not what marathon runners do. Yep. They have their marathon day in sight. They train, they train, they train, they build up and they peak on the day. So the kids understood that marathon analogy really well. And I just kept saying that. Um, yeah, so I did that. I made sure I wasn't too nervy because I didn't want to project that onto the kids. So I was really, really sort of calm about that, um, even though I didn't feel calm. Um, made sure, obviously, that we knew where we were parking. Took, took Josie with me. So we yep. did a dummy, yep. dummy run. So <laughs> she knew exactly where we were parking, where she was going to walk into the school blah, blah, blah. She'd already visited the school before, but I wanted her to see exactly what we were doing. And something that I always said as well to the kids, and I still say this now, I told them there's no magic, no magic about any of this. 
and, and I've written this down, with the right attitude, the right prep, the right mindset, anyone can pass. Yeah. And I truly believe that. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that sort of, if you've, if you've got the right mindset, the right prep, it's almost like a perfect storm. I think, you know, anybody can do it. If, you, if you've got one of those components missing, then it's much harder. But I used to say there's no magic. So, um, and the other thing I wanted to say to parents as well, just to reassure parents um, for this, the week before, and obviously it's a bit different now because they've, some of them have got the extended tests and that could be good or bad. And I've written this down so I didn't forget it. I've put at the end of the day, read and listen to all the advice, but choose the pieces that feel work for you and your children. Yeah. You know them best. Don't be bullied by anybody. You know, take it all in. Including the tutors, I will say. Do it all up. So. Fit it out and do what's best for your child. And at the end of the day, you know, what will be will be. So that was me the week before. So interestingly, I suppose when I prep students, I will do full papers before the week before. Um, oh, we did, we did, Gemma. Okay. But we didn't, but did do, didn't do them thing. every day. No. Okay. So whereas the week before, I think we did probably one a day. A okay. Full one. Okay. So all of the components. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So I would, because I will do them, but I'll mix. So you do, like, you may do each day, you might do something different, but you would do, say, a math, and then you would do, maybe you would mark that math, and then you would do an English, and then you would mark that English. No, but I think I did that's... full tests. Okay. Like full, full two-hour tests. But nothing else. And the other thing, Gemma, that I hasten to add here was that they were not new tests. So what I did with my kids was they would have sat it in June. Then yep. they would have sat the same test in July, August. We'd write down the marks. So when they came to sit that test the week before, they were a little bit more confident because I didn't want to kill their confidence. Yeah, I'd that's the biggest the thing. And they'd get really bad marks. I, I plotted a graph so they could see the marks going up. Yeah. And that really helped. We did, I mean, I don't know what other parents do, but we did loads of repetition. So like the CGP 10 to 11 books, we probably did them all the way through three or four times because we did them on separate paper. Yeah. And I felt it built their confidence because they got confidence to know everything thing. that was in those books. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they can't know everything, can they? Last week, don't do anything new. Is yeah. I, I say to, to my guys is last month, is things you have found tricky but yeah. you shouldn't be doing anything new anyway consolidation it should be tricky things so if you know that your child struggles with timetables do some timetables in the month before yeah. in the week before confidence yeah. so if that is they are really good at nonverbal, but the nonverbal doesn't have that much weighting to it push the nonverbal because they're so good at nonverbal. and look at and look at how good they are. I also get my guys to look back. So I often keep, for, for students that I have for two years, I will keep their original pieces of work. Yes. So I will get them to do something right at the start. And then on that last week, we will look over it. So I will often get them to do something that they did two years ago. And then I will show them so they can see. And I will say, look at the, at the progress that we've made. And again, it's that emphasizing the progress as opposed to the passing. Well, this is why but, we did the tests. You yeah, know, we'd go back so that they could see that they, and they could feel it anyway. You know, they knew that, um, you know, they, they were improving. Yeah. And, and also you, the, the stuff that they were very good at as well. I used to say to them, you know, that's what you're, you're aiming to get top top marks in that because you know that's where you're good and confident and that's if you do that that's where you can give yourself some wriggle room in the other areas yeah i i always have that there's an awkward point where as a tutor and i know this comes across in group tuition as well there's a point where you don't want to you don't want to step on their toes mm -hmm. in that if i see a student the week before I don't want to be doing anything that's going to knock their confidence yeah, at all. Very true. And if you're, if you're in a group class, that's actually quite hard because ah, everyone's, everyone's vying at that yeah. point. Yeah. So I know parents who don't send them for that, for that week before because they know or 
the 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 group tutor will do something that is uh is more of a leveler because you don't what you don't want to do is reveal to them any weakness yes. because they want to be going in there feeling like a superhero and, yeah. and they should feel like i know what i'm doing i am the best prepared that i can be i'm going to do the best that i can do and that's it um the other thing that we do the week before is we prep the pencil case so just like you're going to the drive we do the pencil case so clear pencil case we've got the pencil and then then none of that none of those confusions and none of those questions um i think i've said to you before as well i do with all of the silly questions like what do i do if i need the toilet what if there's a yes. fire Where's yeah. mum going to be when I'm taking the exam? All I've of those that, types of things. <laughs> I'm coming to that in the day and night before. I've got the night before here. Oh, yeah. That yet. <laughs> yeah, we do. I, so I do it the week before, but that's probably because yeah. I don't see them the night before. Of course. Yeah. So, so true, for me, Gemma. it's all that. <laughs> not often. I've had occasionally, yeah. but um, not often. And, and often I'll, I'll, I'll sit with parents um, so that we can have a full conversation and we'll, we'll do things like, you know, what are you going to have for breakfast that day? Because it makes a difference sometimes. So some, some students, and I was one when I, when I took it, um, all the way through up to, my, up to my A-levels and actually beyond, I think I did it myself when I was at university, I'd have porridge on an exam day. Yeah. It was always the same breakfast. Porridge yeah. on an exam day, if it was an afternoon, it was crumpets. But, you know, those are the two things. Yeah. And you have to know those things. Otherwise... Yeah, Funnily, Jude has Jude goes out on his bike all day long because he's a mountain biker, and he always has porridge before he goes goes out on his mountain bike. But well, should I do my day and yeah. night before? Yeah. What's okay. So, so I've, I've got this written down, parents. Otherwise, I'll get it all, all wrong. So, we had many tantrums and tiaras, and I felt like giving up, which is what I've said before, especially as the time grew nearer. But obviously, I didn't. So, um, the day before. We did do some work, but it's up to you and your child. Now, I can't remember whether we did a full paper or not. I, I think we might have done actually, horrible mother, but you know, it's up to you. You might want to take a day off. That's, um, and I put here with the current delays, you know, you've got to gauge what you want to do without sitting in them anymore, or you know, it could be a great catch up time. Um, I felt that mine needed a final push in that week. So that's why we did the tests. And again, the, the marathon analogy, I wanted them to be fit, fit enough to peak on the day. But what I did do is um, we did a lot of, we went out for a really long walk. We did lots of physical exercise as well so that she would sleep that night because I know she always slept better if she'd been swimming or, you know, played tennis or done some sort of sport. So we made sure that she'd done that. I mean, with your kids, you know what relaxes them. It might be watch a movie. I don't know. She went to bed early, but she read and she read. We were quite open about how long she read for, because what I didn't want to do was say, right, lights off. You must sleep because she wouldn't have slept. She would have tossed and turned. So she, she went to bed with a book. And I think I was quite lenient about. Oh, and also where we were, you didn't get a choice of morning or afternoon. You were either given a morning or given the afternoon. And both of my kids got the morning, so they did have to get up reasonably. Jude had to be there for half seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I know, cruel. Um, so make sure everything is packed and by the front door. Uh, leave nothing until the morning, if possible, unless apart from snacks and drinks. And, and let your child see that you're organised, I think, because... Yeah. She's quite laid back in those ways, Josie, whereas Jude, he would, he would have been checking whether his things were at the front door. So, you know, I, I made sure that I wasn't lastminute.com. Um, fill the car with petrol, make sure you know where they're parking. Um, tell your child that you're going to be near the, near the test centre. Yeah. So I was in a Costa just down the road, you know, made sure she knew where I was. This, and I had that talk with her, the, you know, it there's no failing. We love you. Whatever you do, you're as prepared as you can be. And I did this. I sat in bed with her as prepared as you can be. Um, we love you. Come what may. You'll be getting your dog come what may because you're getting it for all the work. We did that the night before. Um, and then we, we gave her another surprise and said that we've, you've got a shopping trip planned with, with your friend who sat the test with her. So that's what we did. 
um, the night before. And then the morning of, we got up with plenty of time yep. and we made Some sure calm. she had a decent breakfast. I mean, jo Josie's choice of breakfast would have been the biggest bowl of cocoa pops she could get her hands on. So we probably did let her have some of those, but then probably tried to put something nutritious into her as well. But I can't remember what that was. <laughs> yeah, nice and calm. On, yeah. on the day I took the 11 plus, um, there was an incident um, on the way to the school and there was a massive traffic jam. Um, oh. And it was like, it was, it was literally every parent's worst nightmare. Um, we, uh, yeah, we had a big incident, a big pile up and, um, yeah all sorts of things on the way and we had left a lot of time so I didn't even notice it yeah. sitting in the back of the car I literally I didn't notice it my parents told me it after mm. that, that there was they said did you notice and I was like no I I you know I I was sat in the back I probably was reading um on the way I knew I had my pencil case I didn't bring any water in but that's because I knew that I would have probably got distracted um, with it. But I know that obviously most children do. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I hadn't even noticed because of the fact that we left it early. I knew where my parents were going to be on the way out. And with my students, I, I would say, you know, always, always organize something fun afterwards because then you, it, it also helps, it helps the invigilators. If the child gets upset, one of the first things we ask is what are you doing after this? Um, yes. So if they're not doing anything, it's actually really hard to calm them down. Yeah. Um, Cause I remember when I, when I used to eventulate it, it was, it was the thing that we would say is, Oh, so what are you doing after this? Cause you wouldn't want to talk about what school they're from. You wouldn't no. want to talk about what prep they've done. So the easiest thing to talk about was what they were going to do afterwards. So if they have something fun planned, then that usually helps, helps just calm them down a little bit so um just be aware of that and then the other thing that i i i've said to them is you are running your own journey because if you get there and there are friends or there are people you don't get on with from school or there is a girl who's upset or a boy that's upset you can't let that distract you you run your own journey yeah and, i mean uh, I've, I've got a little list of things that i actually said to josie if you want to hear them yeah, let's I mean, finish off with those yeah <laughs> so we had a thing called a, a nervous monkey and the monkey we would say look get your monkey off your back when she was nervous and what i said to her the night before was get your monkey on the day put it in your box sit on the lid don't let that monkey out and i so i put once you're in the exam don't let anything distract you it's really sad but if a child cries or is sick, yep. ignore it, keep your head down, don't look round even, you're wasting the most valuable seconds. And particularly at the schools that mine sat for, one mark would have made a difference to a place. Yeah. And I reiterated that, I said one mark will be the difference between, you might get enough marks to, to be considered for a place, but one mark will mean somebody else gets in before you because it's that competitive. And I said, read and listen to all the instructions carefully because I know mine would have been <laughs> around the room and spinning on their chairs. Um, I told them to write their name and date of birth correctly if they had to do that, if it wasn't already printed out. And I said, keep a laser focus on both papers. So if you, for some miraculous reason, <laughs> find the first paper a breeze, <laughs> Don't expect the second paper to be like that. It could yep. be really, really hard. Um, obviously, the things make your answers really clear with a single horizontal line. Not to use the uh, answer paper for any workings, always the question paper. I don't know if that's the same for every school, Gemma. Um, I know it's probably not the same for independent schools. No, it's not the same for Indies, yeah. but anywhere where you have to physically mark yeah. in the... Yeah. yeah. Read the questions carefully. Obviously, you've not got a lot of time, but if you can really focus on reading the question, the chances you've got a much higher chance of getting the answer right, because my son still doesn't read questions properly and he's in year nine. I mean, we'll do stuff now and he'll, I'll say, Jude, and he'll say, oh, didn't read the question properly. <laughs> Only he sounds like Kevin now. It's more like, oh, <laughs> <read the> question <laughs> properly. <laughs> anyway, so um, 
Yeah, and what I said to the kids was, read the questions carefully because almost treat it like they're looking to catch you out. Yeah. They're, they're, they're checking on your reading skills here. So, so don't let them catch you out. But time is tight. So don't panic or linger over a question that you don't know. Yes, Move on and go back to it. Much better to answer 10 than one. Yep. Always use elimination. And I'm, I know as tutors, you'll be telling your children this, um, Gemma, but there's some, a lot of parents watching who might not be able to afford tuition. Yeah. So parents, elimination is one of the best ways um, to raise your odds of getting a question right. So if they've got four answers, eliminate ones that are, they, they think are obviously wrong so that they can cut their odds down to 50% if they're not 100% sure. So most, tu most tutors will tell children that, but parents without tuition, it really helps. Um, short maths as well. What I used to say to my kids was sanity check your answer. Yep. Sense check. Look at that. How can you possibly be that answer? <laughs> sanity check it. And I think if you can use jargon like that with the kids, sanity check, they know what it means. So, you know, I used to say with the short maths, can your answer be really right or is it ridiculously wrong? Yep. And again, you can, you can use that in elimination. Lot, and this was one thing that I really hammered home with uh, long maths, Gemma. And again, I'm, do, I'm doing this for parents who can't afford tuition. Um, with the numerical reasoning, which is what they call it, CEM, it just means word problems, parents. Yep. If you get the first, so what it is, is the word question, and then there may be A, B, C, D, and you have to work through a series to get to your final answer. I really rammed it home to my kids that if they got the first question wrong, then it threw everything out. So I really tried them to sanity check that first step of any numerical reasoning questions. Again, um, if questions look really hard, don't panic. I remember doing that at school. I remember reading the first question of a test and I could feel this hot flush coming up. Try not to do that. You can always go back. Um, Critically, again, parents without tutors, if your child skips a question, circle it on the question paper, okay? Make sure that they miss yeah, a gap the gap on the answer paper because they will get out of sync. They will become unsynchronized. That happened to my Josie. She had to rub out an entire section. Luckily, she realized and she had the time. I so, tell mine to do it with a piece of paper. So yeah. I was, I say to them, if there is two answer booklets or if there are two bits or occasionally in certain tests, you can ask for scrap paper to do it going down or to use a ruler if you're allowed a ruler in, because that's the biggest, that's the biggest problem that you have is if they can't, if, if they're all out by one, there's nothing you can do as an examiner. It's marked by a computer for those that are the, the markings and therefore you just get the whole lot wrong. And, and that is much more likely to happen if they skip a question. Yeah. Because if they skip a question, the chances are they'll, they'll just, they'll skip it on the answer sheet, but they won't skip it on, they, sorry, they'll skip it on the question sheet and then forget to leave a gap on the answer sheet. And obviously they can't circle the answer sheet. So that's something, you know, correlation. So if, if you're talking to your kids, maybe use the word correlate. It's a good, it's a good, um, Word to understand. Vocab. Yeah, good vocab anyway. I couldn't get that out then, Gemma. So yeah, does your does your and does your answer correlate with the question? Okay, because it's like the numerical reasoning, you get one out, they're all out. Um yeah, and if you get an answer wrong, you want to change it, don't scribble it out and put another one in. You have to rub it out the first one so that it's completely gone and just put one more in, okay. Um, mine were given, mine were given, um, I think, I don't know if it was one minute or two minute warnings of, at the end of each section. Yep. Um, so, and that was CEM. Now, what I said to mine was, and I, I think, I'd, I'd like to hear what you think about this, Gemma. Um, basically, once they get the warning, if they've got any questions outstanding, if they've got time, make an educated guess, so eliminate before you just put a line through. 
But if that buzzer goes, and this is where I, one of the people that, that wrote in had said the person was terrified that if the buzzer goes and he's still making a mark, keep going, keep going. is he going to get thrown out? Keep I said to my kids... Until they take the pencil away. <laughs> if that buzzer goes, just... And I said to my kids, if, if the buzzer goes and you're out of time and you've got four or five questions left, just put one letter in. C, 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 C. Because that randomizes yep. um, your chances of getting something right. And it also stops you thinking, should I put A, B, C, D? Just put, choose one letter. We chose C and just put C, 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 C. But yeah. that kid's parents is only if the buzzer has gone. Yes. But I, it's up to you what you do, but I told my kids, do not put that pencil down. No. <laughs> just, just, da, 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 da. I said to mine, don't do it. And I have known examiners to tell children off for it. So I do prepare them for being told off for it, but they can't do anything about it. So no. they can come around and say, you were meant to stop writing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So just smile sweetly. Just yeah. Smile. Oh, um, so yeah, and as I say, only if the buzzer goes, choose one letter because the kids will the kids will mark it quicker in one yeah. letter as opposed to yeah. thinking about where they're going to mark. And that's up to you as a parent. Do you want them to put A, B, C, D, E, and so on? We went for C. Don't know why. So, um, <laughs> when that when that buzzer goes, when you finish the section, you can't go back. Okay, now I believe that's the same in GL and CEM. So, yep. you know, make sure your child, if you've not got a tutor, make sure your child knows that. Jude, in a mock, missed out an entire math section. Let's hope they do that in a mock. Make, tell them when they turn the pages to make sure they're not turning two pages. And look on the back. Yeah, look on, on the, the back. back of the of the paper because they don't turn over and they don't realize yeah. until it says end or end of paper that is the end no yeah. other time yep yeah, because jude missed an entire math section um and that his his marks correlated to that <laughs> got that word in um so yeah and the thing that i that i used to say to mine and regarding the whole vocabulary importance and obviously i'm gonna crow on about vocabulary but I used to say to my two, um, when they moaned about the amount of VR they had to do, because CM is 50%, as is GL, I think, in most places. Nonverbal reasoning and maths, if you've got the techniques, you can pull it out of the bag on the day. If you just don't know two words or three words and an odd one out, you're scuppered. You really have to have a good vocab. And that does just come by reading and practice. And we did the five words a day where we've we choose words and bring them into our conversations over and over. And I still think that's the best way to learn vocab, to be honest. Intelligent um, guess though with vocab. That's yeah. the only way you can do it. You it's know, if you don't know the word, what does it sound like? Where else yeah. is that bit used? Intelligent Look at suffixes, it. prefixes, you know, anything you can. Um, and just, I just wanted to touch very briefly on creative writing, Gemma, and please chime in. Um, what I've said about creative writing is the most important thing is, is make sure that you've practiced. Obviously, it's exactly the same as practicing for anything else, that the more adept you are, the better you'll be. So don't just leave creative writing to the day. You know, I'm sure you won't. But if you're if you've not got tuition, you know, you do need to practice. But children, make parents, make sure your child follows the brief really yes. carefully carefully now even now jude will wobble off on a tangent and the question he's been asked to do i'll read it and i'll just say you've not referred to the question jude you've not referred to the question you can see it's jude that i have the issues with the one who wouldn't read um you know don't veer off on tangents yeah. um and also show off your knowledge of literary devices so your punctuation direct indirect speech your onomatopoeia your personification so get all when, we, those when we do creative writing i will ask them to pick up a couple of objects characters or weathers and to 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 think about where they can show off on those specific bits because yeah. it then limits it limits basically you're then just putting those bits together 
with links yeah. um and i will we will in the in the prep the couple of years before we will work on specific objects we will work on specific weathers or specific scenarios or characters but we will never pre-write a story so because it's really obvious when it's pre-written yeah you said that before Gemma yeah yeah so we will we will do something like they can always all of mine can describe a suitcase really well because it fits into almost every story so if they were asking you to do a winter's day you might go out and there might be a suitcase there waiting for you in the snow and you might pick all the stuff out to build a snowman or something but you can describe the suitcase um or you might have a, a description of a girl who is always going to be in some of your stories yes. so it's almost like you've got this this world in your head yeah. and that's where you show off that's where your similes, your, your alliteration, your onomatopoeia comes in because then you can describe that forest, that person, that object really well and the rest of it's linking. Yeah. So that's the way if that we look got, at it. If you've got all those things that you can pluck out of the air and then join them together yeah. as opposed to writing stayed stock stories, if you like, which yeah. are then just regurgitated. Yeah. And that's why we use, um, we use Rory Story Cubes when we, yeah, you, when we do ours. We didn't yeah. use those, but we've got Linky Things, which we love. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so with well, our we... story cubes, we put the, the little objects that are on the cubes is what right. we focus on. Okay. So that's we, I, I didn't do creative writing. So you know what the 11 plus is like? You, you kind of focus on, on the bits that you know you're going to do. I mean, yeah. we didn't even have spag in ours. So we only started really looking at the spag when they started to do SAT. So, yeah, creative writing, it, it's, you still have to be... I guess what I'm trying to say is... And in fact, Ali from Linky Thinks has posted in the groups recently, and he, I think he put something like, um, oh, but I, what's the word I'm looking for? Scaremongery statement or something. And the create, in the 11 plus, uh, is it not the time to be creative? You kind yeah. of <laughs> have to have learned your creativity and be prepared yeah. beforehand. But like you say, not so it's stayed, but so that you've got lots of, I guess, lots of tools to call upon. Yeah, it's like if you're putting on a play, you open the toy box, what's inside, that should be the type of what you've already got. And, and you should already be able to picture them and put yes. them together in a scenario. You're not looking at pulling a whole script out of that toy box. You're looking yeah. at pulling your characters and, and pulling your scenarios out of there. But yeah, he's right. You know, that is not the time to suddenly go off piste and create yourself a whole new story completely you, you exactly. might as well be the, the examiners haven't seen what you've previously written mm. they can't see it so yeah. use it <laughs> yeah and also you know the other thing as well uh, parents if you've not got tuition make sure that your kids if it's creative writing make sure that they are using the right tone for the audience those kinds of things and then you know there's less chance of veering off piece on the day and that they finish it yeah and that so many creative writings don't get finished because okay. they go off in the middle and then suddenly you get, and they woke up. God. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> just, just allocate five minutes, 10 minutes to close your story. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle, if you're in the middle and they've stepped into a time portal and they've zoomed off and they've landed in the Victorian era and you really wanted them to go on an adventure tough because you've got 10 minutes left and therefore you're ending the story. Yeah. <laughs> like just don't carry on because you think you can get it done in that time finish okay. it and finish it well and check it yeah yeah edit and again again jude still doesn't edit his work because he thinks that's hard and difficult read back because yeah. go editing it once they will pick up so many things um and that will really make an improvement yeah and yeah i mean with the 11 plus multi-choice you don't have time for that but yeah creative writing and independent schools blah 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 Got to be done. yeah right that's about me oh there is one more thing i wanted to mention okay I it... quick because i've got to, i've got to go teach right. <laughs> so... very quickly in capital letters but uh buckinghamshire last year those poor kids were whose the questions were wrong who that had the guts to put their hands up and say because if that had been me I would not have had the confidence to put my hand up and say these questions are wrong. I would have thought that I didn't know the answers. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure why I'm bringing that up, but maybe why am I bringing that up, Gemma? But how would you tell your child to, how would you cover that base? 
I would explain Sorry. that it's that everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. And that 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 whole like not every adult is perfect. Um, but what would you do? What would you do on the day if they're sat there and there is an error on the paper? Would you just you know do you do you warn your child about that or do you just say nothing? I haven't this year. Yeah. Um, because I don't want them to be thinking every time they can't do a question that it's wrong. Wrong, yeah. It's that really... was the the concern. Yeah. And I figured that as um, last when when we had the issue, the majority of students had already skipped it and moved on. Right. So I always push that if you don't know it, guess it, move on move on and if i keep pushing that message then they should guess and move on even if the question's impossible because yeah. otherwise you're think you're setting them up to look out for another thing yeah no that's a very good a very that, good answer. yeah that's the way that that we've done it we did have a think about whether whether to explain it but really ultimately all you can do is point it out and yeah. if you're pointing it out it's then wasting your time yes Whereas yeah. if you skipped it and moved on and someone else is pointing it out, well, then that's not wasting your time. Um, that's time is precious. Advice, <laughs> yeah. Basically, if you can't do it, move on. Yeah. Skip it, and move if, on. And if it's wrong, yes, then that's on. up to them. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Gemma. That's everything from me. Okay. Um, I suppose in terms of my last points is, is that there will be a, I, I say to all my parents, there'll be a point where your child will cry. Um, in this last month and that's normal that happens um i don't know whether you've had them both do it but but usually i will have a point where one of them will and often in my sessions um it's not that it's not to do with you it's not to do with anything it's to do with the fact that they're fed up and they've got they've been told that they're going to do it and they are they're just overwhelmed with it um and you you, at that point then you you take them aside and you ex you do the whole you know it's about your work it's not about the passing that's when we do it actually is, is usually when the tears come um if not we do it the week before that's that's our version um don't dissect it when they come out Just don't do it like absolutely don't do it don't also stand there and dissect it with another mother whilst they're there because yeah, that's the worst thing to do in front of them because yeah. they they just want to forget it you know forget it leave it at the door um don't when when you're turning up if you know somebody who is there who you've met online or you've met at school focus on getting them sorted and and then then go off and see them because i i know that occasionally i've had students who've uh, who've been really worried that you know, mum's not going to do this in time. You've usually got loads of time, but they, they really panic about those kind of things. So get them sorted, get them away to the classroom. When you get there, don't hang around with it. If they can go straight to the room that they're going to be taking the exam in, then they're going to be a lot better off and, and, and doing that because they are entering their exam than if they have to stand there with you whilst you have a chat or whilst you you know deal with this thing that's happening really just try and get them off <laughs> it's yeah. kind of as quick as possible but not not like just sending them off but but you really want to get them started on a good note on that one yeah when mine came out i just said how did it go and they said this is in this and then they didn't want to talk about it anyway so it was just like okay it's done no. and it was yeah. Jude's birthday poor thing <laughs> he did his on his birthday <laughs> But yeah don't yeah don't i suppose don't compare them i always say that to parents is just don't compare them don't sit there and analyze their performance don't if they do something in the last week that they absolutely bomb a paper because they panic in the middle of it and so for even if you even if you've been over that paper before and they suddenly come out with 30 odd percent don't make a big thing out of it yeah just say oh isn't that and, you know it happened it happened today it's not going to happen on the real thing this is why it happened probably because they panicked and don't make a massive thing out of it but do try and make sure that they they're, they're doing stuff that they can confidently do 
because there's there's no point doing hard stuff in the last week before you're not going to gain anything just in the last week it's you are more likely to destroy their confidence yeah more likely to crush confidence when you just want to keep it oh that's brilliant thanks Gemma. 